On the night of August 6, 2011, a US military helicopter with the call sign Extortion 17, carrying a quick reaction force of 38 men, was on its way to the Wardak province in Afghanistan. Their mission was to reinforce the Joint Special Operations Command Unit of the 75th Rangers who were in combat with enemy insurgents. Extortion 17 would never land at its destination, and the tragic event would claim the lives of everybody on board, including 17 Navy SEALs. This event was a huge shock to all military personnel and would bear many questions about the tactics and strategic planning of the mission. This story seems to be shrouded in mystery and controversy, but to fully understand the significance of this event, we must first delve into the details on the War of Afghanistan and the US military's goals. After the September the 11th attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon, the United States launched a global war on terror against Al-Qaeda and its allies. On September the 11th, enemies of freedom committed an act of war against our country. It will not end until every terrorist group of global reach has been found, stopped, and defeated. In 2002, the US invaded Afghanistan, where Al-Qaeda was based and toppled the Taliban regime that had been harboring the group. The war on terror also included military operations in Iraq, as well as a wide range of diplomatic, economic, and legal efforts to combat terrorism around the world. The war in Afghanistan had been long and difficult. The US forces had been facing a ruthless and determined enemy. Over the years, American soldiers would fight hard to bring stability to the country. For many years, it seemed like there was no end in sight for this war, and this would become the longest war in modern day history. Now, let's discuss Extortion 17. On the night of August the 5th, 2011, at 22.37 p.m. local time, a group of 47 U.S. Army Rangers were deployed from a forward operating base in the Logar province to the Tangi Valley in Afghanistan to capture or kill a high-ranking Taliban leader known as Kari Tahir. The mission involved two transport helicopters and was supported by two AH-64 Apache helicopters, an AC-130 gunship, and other intelligence and surveillance aircraft. Whilst the Rangers were approaching the target compound at 11pm local time, intelligence observed a group of people leaving the compound and growing in size. The Rangers would engage in a different group of fighters. At 11.30pm, one of the Apache support helicopters engaged in a brief skirmish with a different group of eight Taliban fighters 400 meters north of the compound, they would end up killing six of them. ISR surveillance aircraft kept watch on the insurgent group that had not yet been attacked in the compound. The group which began with just two people eventually grew to nine or ten. The commanders of the Special Operations Task Force and the Immediate Reaction Force suspected that Tahir may be among that group. As a result, they chose to use SEAL reserves to engage the group at about one in the morning. Almost an hour later, the Aviation Brigade Commander approved the landing zone for Extortion 17, which would provide the ground for the infiltration of the SEAL team. The landing zone had been examined for a previous mission, but it had not yet been used. The commanders then decided to add more troops to the mission, bringing the team size to 33 people, which included 17 Navy SEALs, members from other US military units, seven members from the Afghan National Security Forces, and one Afghan interpreter. To quickly unload all of the troops at the destination, all of the soldiers were loaded onto one CH-47D Chinook helicopter, while the other Chinook helicopter would serve as a decoy. The two helicopters left the base at around 2.23 a.m. Whilst the commanders were briefing the crew of Extortion 17, back in the Wardak province, three Taliban fighters took up a position in a grove of trees, while the remaining six or seven entered a building about two kilometers away from the target compound. Going forward, the two AH-64 Apache helicopters would be engaged in tracking these two groups of Taliban and hence unable to provide surveillance or fire support to the inbound Chinook which was carrying the SEALs. As Extortion 17 approached the landing zone, the SEALs and other units on board prepared for their mission. They checked their weapons and gear one last time, mentally preparing for the tasks ahead. But little did they know, disaster was about to strike. The Chinook descended lower and lower, its rotors beating the air with a deafening roar. At 2.38 AM, the Chinook was descending onto the landing zone when a group of Taliban fighters who had not yet been detected opened fire on the helicopter. The militants were approximately 220 meters away. The group would fire multiple RPG rounds from a two-story building. The second round would strike one of the helicopter's rotor blades, causing an instant loss in control for the pilots. 30 seconds later, one of the Apache helicopters who was providing support would radio the crash in. Six minutes after securing the compound, the rangers detained several people and set out on foot to watch the crash site. They arrived at the crash site at 4.12 in the morning and discovered that there were no survivors. 
By 4.25 p.m., all of the remains had been removed from the crash site via a ground convoy and transported to the combat outpost in Saeedabad. The process of recovering wreckage from the crash site continued until the 9th of August. Four years after the downing of Extortion 17, there were many theories about the possibility of a government cover-up. The official statement from US Central Command claimed that a Taliban fighter had fired a rocket-propelled grenade and scored a lucky shot. It was reported that the Taliban fighters had no prior knowledge of the helicopter's flight path and that they had simply been at the right place at the right time. A Department of Defense official claimed that there were no leaks from the Afghans. However, some people, including the families of those involved and other concerned citizens, have raised doubts about this story. The theories suggest that Afghan forces might have leaked information about the mission to the Taliban despite the fact that the Navy SEAL team on board Extortion 17 was from a different squadron than the one that had killed Osama bin Laden three months earlier. There are many other theories regarding the downing of the helicopter. One of them suggests the men aboard Extortion 17 may have fired upon each other whilst the helicopter was in the air, inevitably leading to the crash. Many people have believed that there may be more to the story than what the government has disclosed to the public. Regardless of what happened that night, 38 men were killed in the crash. I want to pay my respects to the victims and the loved ones who have been affected by this tragic event. Thank you for watching this video. If there are any other stories slash topics you would like me to cover, make sure to comment below and leave them in the description and I'll be sure to get to them. Peace.